I realized after thinking about it for a while that there are two reasons I don't use my dust collector. Number one, it really struggles to start. It's got some mechanical issues that need to be worked out. And number two, it doesn't turn itself on when I need it to. So today, we're gonna to fix both of those problems. First, we gotta get the motor starting properly. It turns out the problem was actually the centrifugal switch. I've never had a problem like that before with the motor, so I've decided to post a video about that separately so that I don't have this motor repair tip buried in a dust collection video. But anyway, I got the centrifugal switch working, and now it's time to clean this guy up and just generally get it into good shape. I bought this thing at an industrial auction a couple years ago and never quite finished cleaning it up and fixing it up. In fact, I've barely used it, as I mentioned earlier. In the spirit of taking it apart, I also decided to remove the impeller, clean the shaft, all that good stuff, and I bent the impeller pretty good while removing it. Now in hindsight, I can see that there's a groove cut into the collar of the bore there, and that would have been the perfect place to put my bearing puller. I briefly tried to bend the impeller back into shape, but that also meant trying to rebalance it, and I decided to bail on that plan and go ahead and order a new impeller. But then I ran into a different problem. The model number that I have is 3AA17, as you can see here. When searching online, the only option available was 3AA17B. There was no A. I looked for a while and decided I would take a chance and order the B, and sure enough, there's a difference. So uh, on this impeller, the shaft bore here is three quarters of an inch, and the original shaft is five eighths. So if you try to put this guy on, you can see how loose that is, it's not gonna fit. So what I decided to do was to purchase a shaft collar to fill in the gap. This is a shaft collar and you can order these online in quite a few places. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this shaft collar down to size and hopefully that'll allow me to make these two parts up without any other problems. So far, all the fasteners on this assembly have been metric. So I went and grabbed an eight millimeter bolt and it just will not thread in there, at least not easily. Then I grabbed a 5 16 coarse thread and it won't thread in there, not without feeling like I'm having to force it. So then I went and grabbed a thread gauge. I've got it set to 1.25, which is what it should be for the eight millimeter fastener. And looking down in there, it sure looks like 1.25. So finally I went and downloaded the manual and it definitely says M8 by 25 millimeter fastener. But the bottom line is, I'm now pretty confident that this should be an eight millimeter thread and perhaps just the first couple threads are rough. I have no idea if this is the right stuff to use, but I'm gonna give it a try. I'm very certain though that with all the knowledge on the internet, one of you guys is gonna tell me what I'm supposed to put here. And by the time you tell me, this will all be installed and it'll be sad that I couldn't use the right stuff, but I will know what to do next time. <laughs> okay, that should seal it up. Now it's time to decide where am I gonna put my dust collector. Most everything in my shop is on casters and can be moved around, but this dust collector is gonna be plumbed and everything mounted to the ceiling, so ideally it's not something I wanna move very often, if ever. This spot is great because I have access all the way up to the ceiling. 
I can run a pipe along this wall, which is where most of my tools are plugged in. So there's a lot of good reasons to put it in this corner. The only reason I don't like this corner is because it requires me to move all this stuff out of this corner. So while that really sucks, this is definitely the best place to put it. So let's get to it. All right, a little bit of a dilemma here. I'd rather have the pipe go up very close to the wall, but that puts the bag out front. I don't know how much I care about that, but I don't like having the bag blowing out right here. I think I'd rather this be going this way, but then that rotates the whole drum. Oh man, that means I might need to unbolt this entire housing, rotate it around 90 degrees, so that should put it on like that. So that shouldn't cause any problems. Let's get this rotated around. Well, just like everything else in engineering, it didn't quite work out the way I expected. The pump casing here gets wider as it gets around to the area where the exhaust is. And now it's actually interfering in the area where the pipe's gonna be sticking out. This is about the same size, and as you can see, won't quite get in there without moving that over. And now the holes don't line up over here. As I rotate it around, it gets narrower, as you would expect. Wanna take a wild guess where it finally clears? Right back where it was. <sighs> yep, that's how it goes. Well, I do have one more option, I guess. I could remake this 3D printed piece in that metal plate on the bottom with a little gooseneck-like offset on it. I feel like I'm just gonna run into more problems when I start doing that, and I'm gonna end up making more pieces. If it really bothers me later, I'll go back and redo it. Now, there are a few places where I put some PVC glue, but for the most part, all the parts are dry fit together. Also, the PVC pipe that I'm using is the Thin Wall Sewer Variety. Much cheaper, but just as effective. Pick that up from Bob, what I like to make stuff. Bob's also got a great video on his dust collection system, which is also automated with an Arduino setup. So I recommend you check that out. In fact, I'll put a link in the description. There's one more topic that comes up related to PVC and dust collection, and that is the possibility that a static charge can build up on the PVC pipe and possibly ignite the sawdust. You've got a really flammable material, sawdust, flowing through your pipes, and you do have a static buildup that can develop on your PVC pipe. This is supposed to be resolved by adding a ground wire to your system and grounding it to your house. I've investigated this topic, and I can't find a single documented case of a static charge building up on a dust collection system and then causing a shop to catch on fire. I personally don't think it's a realistic concern, but I will add a grounding wire, if only so that my neighbors aren't worried about my shop catching on fire. All right, let's talk about how we're gonna automate this so I don't have to turn on the dust collector and open and close blast gates. So here I have a custom designed blast gate. It's a compilation of components, as you can see. This is a, just a plain plastic blast gate I ordered on Amazon. It was like six, seven dollars. And these two components are 3D modeled in SolidWorks to hold everything together. And then here we have a linear actuator, a pneumatic linear actuator that's double acting, which means it takes air to extend it and then air to retract it. You could do a single acting valve with air to open and then spring return, and that would work just as well in this application, I think. You could also just buy uh, an automatic blast gate. They sell those as well. Last time I looked, they were about $120 or so. 
but what fun is that? So anyway, the way this works is here I have a solenoid valve. It's a 5-2 valve and I'm going to do a, a whole video on these uh, pneumatic components in the future. For now, you just need to know that when I put 24 volts on the system, and I'll do that now, the valve extends and the gate is open, as you can see there. If I turn off the voltage, it closes. So that means if I can automate the supply of 24 volts to this valve, I can automate the opening and closing of this valve. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with a series of relays. So now we get down to the awesome part. Here we have my start switch for my table saw in this particular case. When I push this button, that's gonna do two things. One, it'll turn on a table saw, obviously, but it will also turn on a relay. Now relays are amazing. These are electromechanical switches that can turn on other switches. The reason you want something like that is because it makes your system smart and it can also activate switches of different voltages. In my case, I've got a 24 volt solenoid valve that I need to turn on. And I've also got a 240 volt contactor that I need to turn on for my dust collector. Now, a contactor is also basically a relay. It's just a really giant one. And this is what's gonna allow me to turn on and off the dust collector without having to flip a switch. I'll put a wiring diagram here on the screen for you so that you can see kind of a sample of how each tool is gonna be wired. I've got another relay sitting here to give you a different example. This one's a 24 volt relay that can turn on two different circuits. But the point is these come in a lot of different variations and they're a really powerful tool for automating your shop. Just about any sort of automation project is gonna rely on relays. So these guys are definitely worth getting familiar with. All right, ladies and gentlemen, final test. Everything is turned on. Yes! Woo! Oh, man. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Closing, turning off. Yeah. Doesn't it feel so good when it works? Ah. Oh. That is beautiful. So a quick tip, if you don't have a zip tie long enough, you can always connect them together. Here I'm just navigating the head of the CNC around to make sure that the hose doesn't get tangled or caught up anywhere. There's one more issue I need to resolve and that is this spindle is capable of automatic tool changes. And I definitely plan to add a tool holder to the side rail over here. In fact, I've already bought a whole bunch of these little tool holders uh, for my mount that I'm designing currently. The issue is these two have to interact. I have to have my dust collector shroud in place, but also be able to go over, drop off a tool, pick up a new tool without interfering with the dust collector. So I've decided I've had enough engineering problems for this project for now. So we're going to put that guy on hold since I don't even have the tool changer fully built yet. In the meantime, I'm just gonna enjoy the fact that there's gonna be much less dust to sweep up and breathe in, and I can finally do all of that without having to think about it. Now that I've done this, it's got me looking at everything going, hmm, can I make that automatic? <laughs> anyway, I'd love to know what kind of things you guys are automating in your workshop, or what would you even like to do, and maybe you don't know how to do it. Let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll make a video on it. Anyway, thanks for watching.